Our area's most beautiful properties deserve the finest realtors. Meeks Realty Group. We focus on buying and selling residential and commercial properties throughout the tri-state area. Contact Meeks Realty Group online at meeks.us or call 304-440-1101. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 580 WCHS, its employees, or WVRC Media. 580 Live is presented by Thornhill Automotive and is broadcast live from the Parmar Store Studio. The country, the United States of America, the state, West Virginia, the city, Charleston. This is 580 Live, and your host of 580 Live. What we've got here is failure to communicate. He's kind of a big deal. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. Dave Allen. Have a good Thursday morning to you from the Parmar Store Studio. It's 580 Live, brought to you by the Thornhill Lotter Group, the voice of Charleston, WCHS. Ryan Nicholson is our producer today. Bigly, Piggly, Wiggly, Hotline 304-345-5858. Fruit Pharmacy Text 304-935-5008. Live is brought to you by the Thornhill Lotter Group, including the all-new Thornhill Toyota. Where the celebration continues, come check out the sleek new Camry, the versatile RAV4, or the all-new Tacoma. Drive away with a smile on your face and money in your pocket with Thornhill. Click or come by Thornhill Toyota, WV.com, around US 119 in Chapmanville. And we do the uh, show from the Parmar Store Studio. If there's not a Parmar Store near you now, there will be soon. Stop by your favorite Parmar Store and pick up a world's best chocolate bar for only a single solitary dollar. And proceeds will benefit Children's Home Society, West Virginia. Fantastic organization. And remember, there's not a Parmar Store near you now, there will be soon. Loaded up show this morning. Delegate and gubernatorial candidate Mark Capito is here. Plus, to put it mildly, there were some all-out massacres last week in the world of high school football, and there are a lot of reasons people are pointing to for that. One is the new high school transfer rule, which uh, pretty much allows high school student-athletes to transfer to wherever, whatever school that they want to play sports without having to sit out a year. Delegate Dana Farrell of here in Kanawha County, himself Self, a longtime educator, has got a problem with that, and he's going to join us to talk about that a little bit uh, later on, and have you your opportunity to weigh in on that as well. Seems to have been a problem with the West Virginia poll, particularly the one that was released on Friday as it pertains to the race for Republican uh, governor, the Republican nomination for governor. Rex Repass was on Hoppy to explain it yesterday, and uh, we're going to uh, weigh in on that as well. Plus. I guess top, before we uh, get to our first guest this morning, uh, the big story around here today and tomorrow, all of our stations, is the WV Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon happening today and tomorrow. It's sponsored by Stike Wealth Enhancement. You can call 877-719-5437. That's 877-719-KIDS to donate or text the word YOUTH to 35651. That's 35651. Uh, mentioned that Stike uh, Wealth Enhancement is the uh, title sponsor. Polka Valley Bank is sponsoring the text line. Pew Furniture sponsoring uh, the um, the Hope Room where everybody's located upstairs. Operators taking calls. Kidaroos, uh, Trojan Landing Marine, Peyton Law Firm, Pepperoni Grill, Chick-fil-A, all helping out too. Uh, so again, help us help these kids and the people who care for them. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit more a little later on the show, as well as on all of our stations as well. So lots to get to. Something big going on in Putnam County this weekend. It's the annual Putnam County Homecoming. With us now, Patty Ashworth and uh, Gail Terry, part of the Putnam County Homecoming. Ladies, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Wow, listen, to, it's like they're having the Pointer Sisters on here. That was perfect use. Did you guys rehearse that, saying that at the, at the same time like that? No, but we should have. <laughs> if, we, if we had rehearsed, it wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> Are they, uh, I, I guess, is always a part of what goes on over there. They do have a, a talent competition. Is that still happening this year? No, it's not. Oh, well, I was going to say, you guys were perfect. You guys could have entered the talent competition. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so, how many years, uh, ladies, has this thing been going on in Winfield? 94. 94. And is it true that Mayor Randy Barrett's been there for 93 of them? That's what we hear, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's a big event. I mean, it, it is, uh, it's one of the premier events in Putnam County. I'm talking about the uh, Putnam County Homecoming now. What are the uh, days and dates? Oh, well, we know the dates, but just give us the days. It's uh, this coming Saturday, the 9th, and Sunday, the 10th. And uh, what all do we have going on? You said there's no talent show this year, but what do we have going on? Well, on Saturday, we have um, 
uh, Maximum Velocity Wrestling uh, will be there in the afternoon to entertain. And um, I think that will probably be a big draw. People seem to like the, like the the wrestling entertainment. Yeah. Uh, we have music, uh, from, live music from the stage will be happening from 2 o'clock until probably about 9 or 10 o'clock that evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got magicians that will be there that day. We've got a large car show that will be going on on the Courthouse Hill. Um, let's see what else we've got going on that day. Oh, CAMC has, uh, will be providing a health fair there on Main Street from 12 until 4.30. Um, Gailene, you want to tell him about Sunday? Um, on Sunday, um, the festivities will start with the opening ceremonies uh, with a flag raising at 10. We'll have a church service at 1045. Gospel music after the church service. Um, the Face Myers will be singing um, at 1 o'clock. Introdu- introduction of the Queens. And at 1.30, the Grand Parade. And that that parade uh, is is huge every year. I mean, it is a big old parade, ladies. Yes. Yeah, and and the, and the church service is always uh, that's kind of a unique thing, uh, uh, but that's always been a part of it, or at least you know for many many years. What I understand is having that uh, that that church service, and sometimes people in that area will um, step away from their their normal church for a Sunday, and and everybody comes together for one big church service there. Right, right. It is a community church service. Everyone is welcome, and it's always very very nice. And how much work goes into this thing? I know the answer is a lot, but I mean, you literally, this is one of those things, ladies, that you, once uh, once this weekend is over, you'll start working on next year's, I presume. Yeah, probably the first part of October, we start working on the um, events and uh, trying to line up entertainment and that type of thing for next year. And there's always great food at the Putnam County Homecoming as well. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've never had any complaints in the past, and I've gone every year, so I haven't had just uh, nearly every year since I've lived there. I've never had any complaints in the past. Again, we're talking to uh, Patty Ashworth and Gaylene Terry uh, as part of the uh, Putnam County Homecoming. Uh, is there a place where people can learn more about it? There is a website or a Facebook page, uh, Putnam County Homecoming Festival. And uh, I believe there's just a, pl- a website, isn't there? Yes, just- PutnamCountyHomecoming.com. There you go. So it's all right there for you, PutnamCountyHomecoming.com. Uh, again, give us the, uh, the the dates and the times. Again, go over the schedule again before we let you go, ladies. Okay. It's Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 9th. Uh, I, the entertainment will begin around 2. <clears throat> we will have craft vendors and food vendors that will be set up at noon. So from noon until uh, 7 o'clock that evening, Cody Wickline uh, will take the stage, and he'll probably be there for until about 9. Uh, then on Sunday, we start at 10 o'clock with the flag raising, and followed by the community church service, uh, by the gospel music. The, we also will end the day with the uh, crowning of the new Miss Putnam County. And that'll be on Sunday the 10th. And the Grand Parade begins at 1.30. Anybody that wants to participate in the parade can still show up that day. Uh, but make sure you're there by noon so that the people in charge of the parade can, you know, work you into the line and that kind of thing. And uh, explain the parade route again. It begins at, uh, on the Courthouse Hill or, the, or around the middle school area. And go goes through town on the main eight seventeen uh, down to the elementary school. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun. It always is. Hope the weather holds out. My good friends in the world of meteorology say that there could be some rain this weekend. But you know what? I'm sure you folks have uh, have gone through rain to do this. You've gone through uh, probably cold temperatures. And you've gone through hot temperatures as well. You'll get through it, ladies. I appreciate you being here. We'll see you this weekend. Thanks a lot. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Patty Ashworth and uh, Gaylene Terry from the Putnam County Homecoming. Again, it's Saturday and Sunday and everything going on in Will. It really is a big deal. I had an opportunity uh, a few years ago to have uh, America's Got Talent winner Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. there. Uh, Landau actually judged their talent competition. Uh, he and uh, Kenny Bass and uh, a couple of other people judged the talent competition. And I got a chance to uh, drive uh, Landau uh, in the parade over there several years ago. So it's a big doings in Winfield if you get an opportunity to stop by. Speaking of Winfield, 580 Live is brought to you in part by General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. From kitchens to paints to decks, straight framing wood, roofing metal, and anything else you need, you'll find it at General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline, 304-345-5858. Fruit Pharmacy Text, 304-935-500. We're going to talk to gubernatorial candidate and Delegate Moore Capito coming up here in a few moments. Also a little later on, Delegate Dana Farrell in to talk about this high school transfer rule. And in the middle of everything else going on, again, we're doing up the WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon. We started a couple hours. I was just upstairs uh, with the folks at, uh, at uh, Psych Wealth Enhancement who are helping out with this. So many other great sponsors as well. I mentioned Kitteroos, Trojan Landing Marine, Peyton Law Firm, Pepperoni Grill, Chick-fil-A, uh, and uh, and more. So we appreciate We have the greatest listeners in the world. This is the first time that we've done it for this particular ch- uh, charity, WVU Medicine Children's, uh, and uh, you can make your donations uh, by calling 877-719-5437. That's 877-719-KIDS. Or you can just text the word YOUTH to 35651, 35651. The WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon today and tomorrow. All our stations across the state of WVRC Media are taking part in it. 580 Live is brought to you in part by QC Kinetics. If you're tired of dealing with pain in your knees, your hips, your shoulders, or your back, get relief without surgery, drugs, or downtime. Call QC Kinetics of Huntington and Cross Lanes for a free consultation. 304-202-5566. 304-202-5566 for QC Kinetics of Huntington and Cross Lanes. We're back after this from the Parmar Store Studio. 580 Live is brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group on the Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses want to thank you for supporting local small businesses. We're live right now at the WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon, driven by Stike Wealth Enhancement. This is where our community comes together to make a lasting impact on the lives of our young champions. WVU Medicine Children's provides the greatest range of pediatric specialty and high-risk maternal care in the region. And this not-for-profit hospital never turns a child away. Thanks to the support of local sponsors like Kidaroos, Trojan Landing, and Peyton Law Firm. When you call, remember, Polka Valley Bank sponsors our text line. Text YOUTH to 35651 to make a contribution. And when you call, remember, Pew Furniture sponsors the Hope Room, where our dedicated team is ready to take your call at 877-719-5437. That's 877-719-KIDS. Join us in cheering a brighter future for these young champions. Dial 877-719-5437 or text YOUTH to 35651. The WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon, presented by Stike Wealth Enhancement. Together, let's change kids' health and change the future. Stike Wealth Enhancement joins the WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon. Call 877-719-5437, and your call, answered in the Pew Furniture Hope Room, supports young champions. Sponsored in part by Peyton Law Firm. Help us help them. The Cares for Kids Steve Pugh Memorial Hope Room is sponsored by Pugh Furniture Warehouse Showrooms. Proud to support the mission of WVU Medicine Children's. 1320 Smith Street in Charleston's Warehouse District. Open Monday through Saturday, home of the Almost Heaven Mattress. PewFurniture.net. Get ready for the ultimate summer savings at the new Thornhill Toyota Celebration. Hey, it's Sydney inviting you to the Thornhill Motor Mile to take advantage of our red, white, and vroom savings. Upgrade your ride with unbeatable deals on our top models from the sleek Camry to the versatile RAV4 or the all-new Tacoma. We have the perfect car for your summer adventures. You can drive away with a smile on your face and money in your pocket. Click or come by ThornhillToyotaWV.com or US 119 in Chapmanville for the summer celebration. See Thornhill for full details. Nine twenty one. 
from the Parmar Store Studio. It's 580 Live, brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group, voice of Charleston, WCHS. 580 Live is brought to you in part by Pinnacle Consultants, whether you're replacing a roof, remodeling a kitchen, or replacing a bathroom. To help keep it safe and to keep it legal, get with Pinnacle Consultants. They can inspect your site, collect samples, perform lab analysis, and provide results within a week. Testing all renovations for mold, asbestos, and lead is the law in West Virginia. Visit PinnacleCorp.net for Pinnacle Consultants, because what you don't know can hurt you. Let me welcome to the show delegate and candidate for Governor Mark Capito. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Dave. It's good to be with you. Thank you. You picked a special day to be here, man. It's kind of a beehive of activity going on with our uh, with our with our uh, thing we're doing upstairs there with the uh, the kids uh, WV Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon. So, well, thanks for having me on, and it is, and thank you for the work that you're doing for for the for the children of West Virginia. And we're doing it not only, um, as we said, at this station, but all of our stations throughout the state. We're all taking part in this. Um, first of all, I want to start. The West Virginia poll came out Friday, uh, which showed you in the lead, at least uh, early on in the Republican nomination for governor. Now, some tweaking, as I talked about, had to be done, but still didn't, didn't change the fact that, uh, that uh, and that was all covered with Rex Repass on Hoppy yesterday. But the poll shows that you are in the lead. Over Attorney General Patrick Morris, the odd dealer Chris Miller, and Secretary of State Mac Warner. Again, very early on, but what are you doing right so far? Well, it is early on, and you know we're going to see a lot of polls. And obviously, we know that the uh, the only poll that really matters uh, is when West Virginians go to to the polls on election day and make the decision. But you know, I think what we're seeing is a reflection of our our room for growth. We're seeing great momentum. All of this is very encouraging, and I think you know. When you look at it, it's a result of the work that we've been doing. Uh, we've been uh, on the road. I think we've driven more than 35,000 miles uh, in this state so far, and we're just getting started. We're talking to parents, and we're talking to teachers, and we're talking to our church leaders and community leaders and our law enforcement, and all of these folks are excited again about West Virginia, and we're starting to win. We know that uh, West Virginia, for the first time in a long, long time, is on the right track, and we've seen that uh, reflected in 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 some of the news coverage that obviously you all have had here. But I can tell you that has been reflected when we've been on the road listening. That's what we're hearing from West Virginians. And as someone who played a lot of sports growing up, mm -hmm. our coaches always said you can never win unless you believe you can win. And West Virginians are starting to believe we can win again. I want to talk about that message uh, that's that's out there. And again, you kind of touch on a little bit. And again, we're talking with Delegate Moore Capito, a Republican candidate for governor. So when you're going out to a town hall or you're going meeting, as you said, with a church group or you're meeting with uh, with whomever that you happen to be meeting with, is that enthusiasm? Are you hearing that enthusiasm from West Virginia a lot? Because I, I hear both. I mean, I have a lot of people on the show that say, yes, yes, they're hearing it. But then some people, maybe they're not seeing it where they I mean, here in, in Kanawha Valley. I live in Putnam County. We're exploding in Putnam County right now, and the Eastern Panhandle is doing real well, the Morgantown area. But an area like, let's say, a McDowell County, uh, maybe not seeing it as much, or, or, or Clay County. I'm just using those as an example. What are those people telling you? I think we're hearing, um, generally speaking, we're hearing encouraging feedback when we when we've been uh, all throughout West Virginia, and and clearly we're seeing pockets that are uh, that are experiencing more growth. Uh, we've seen that for uh, a few years, of course, in, in in the eastern panhandle. We're starting to see it with the developments and the economic uh, development announcements that we've seen, uh, of course, in Jackson County and in Mason County as of late. Um, and those things, those have tentacles. And the, the, the tentacles from those uh, announcements are positive. Um, we have uh, the, the thing that I was mentioning last week when we were uh, at our first sort of debate I mentioned that, uh, you know, my grandfather used to write me letters, and there's one that vividly uh, sticks with me. And in that, he had suggested that um, in his life, he had found that successful people are good listeners and that I adopt that creed. Now, as I said then, I'm not sure if he was sending us a not-so-subtle hint at the time or just giving us life advice, but that's something that stuck with me. So when we go to any community uh, in West Virginia, the first thing that we do is listen. Uh, too often folks go into the room and just start talking. But the, the number one thing that we are focused on is listening, listening to the people of West Virginia, listening to how they're feeling, listening to what their concerns are. I can tell you as a parent of two young children um, that a lot of what we're hearing is a result of the, you know, the, the Biden administration's crazy economic policies that are causing prices to soar on West Virginians. So, 
you know, when West Virginians asked us to deliver historic tax relief uh, this past year, I was proud to lead and we got that done. Uh, but but we need to find more ways to put more money in folks' pockets so they can get up and get started. I want to talk about your time um, in the legislature. What what did you accomplish? Uh, what are some of the things that you were particularly proud of that you uh, as a legislator that you were able to work with others or yourself to be able to accomplish that you think will transition as you move from that building into another one if you're elected governor and you move into the governor's mansion? Anybody that uh, that knows me or that has worked with me will tell you that I will that I have an open door policy. Um, I uh, always listen, as I mentioned before. And I think that's critical in delivering a policy that, that, that has positive results. I mean, and I've always executed and delivered as judiciary chairman. You know this, Dave. There is no committee that sees uh, more um, conservative uh, principled policy than that committee. Mm-hmm. And I've been proud to lead that committee and deliver and craft uh, the most conservative agenda in the history of the state of West Virginia and on our travels across the state and the people that we're talking to in West Virginia, they appreciate the, the work that we've done in banning sanctuary cities. They appreciate the work that we have done to protect the life of the unborn. They appreciate what we have gotten done to protect uh, Second Amendment rights. And, of course, they appreciate the economic pro-growth policies that took us when I came into the legislature from a 450 or so million dollar deficit the last year in a you know in an almost a two billion dollar surplus. So the tides are changing in West Virginia, and that's because of what we have gotten done. And we've been talking about our get it done conservative uh, message, and it's really resonating with the people of West Virginia. You are talking to Mark Capito, who is a delegate and wants to be the next governor of the state of West Virginia. Our phone calls to 580 Live are a service of Bigly Piggly Wiggly, and our texting services provided by Fruth Pharmacy, your hometown family pharmacy. Uh, Attorney General Patrick Morrissey has said uh, he is the only true conservative uh, that's in the field, certainly saying he's the only one with a proven track record uh, in the field as it pertains to his accomplishments. Now, when I had Secretary of State Mike Warner on the show, I asked him his thoughts on that. I asked Chris Miller when he was on the show last week. Your thoughts when you hear that statement? As we continue to say, we are the get it done conservative in this race. If you look at uh, my record uh, in accomplishments and executing and delivering on conservative issues, it is second to none. Uh, again, I will, I'll reiterate, as you know, and many of your listeners know, as chairman of, judici- of the Judiciary Committee, I am charged with crafting the most conservative policies and ensuring not only that they're crafted and put through our committee, but then I stand and defend them on the floor and ensure that they become law in the state of West Virginia. Everybody that we are talking to in the state of West Virginia uh, recognizes that. They recognize the positive steps and the momentum that we have put in place in the legislature. And I'm proud to have gotten that done and gotten it done in a very conservative way. Last week, the Chamber of Commerce said their business summit at the Greenbrier. I know you were part of that. The other other um, um, folks that want to be governor on the Republican side were all part of that forum. I got a chance to uh, watch it uh, after the fact. I wasn't there, but I watched it uh, after the fact. Uh, and it really wasn't a debate. More, It was more of a, you know, just this is what you hope to do. And I thought everything turned out uh, pretty well. Um, what, did you hear anything uh, in there or, or sense anything there that's going to kind of, do you think will push you ahead of the others? I think it's great to be able to get together and talk about the vision that uh, that I have for West Virginia. Um, This is a movement that, again, has room to grow. We continue to um, accelerate and build momentum as we talk about this. Any chance that we have to set forth uh, our accomplishments and and what we've done as the get it done conservative uh, in this race and then talk about a vision again, um, what is what is going on in West Virginia right now is a really special time. And what all of the candidates on that stage said last week is that West Virginia has momentum. And West Virginia has momentum because of the work that Governor Justice and the legislature have done. So when we think about why we are where we are, much of that has to do is with what I have gotten done in the legislature and what we have gotten done uh, as as a group uh, down in Charleston, and that is that is spread throughout the, that is spread throughout the state, and that uh, that event uh, there, as I said, was more of a forum. But there will be debates as we get again. We're you know we're, we're just now, we just now passed Labor Day. Campaigns start earlier and earlier every year, every time it seems. But there will be some actual. Uh, debates, classic debates held either on television, radio, or in, in, in civic auditoriums or whatever. You looking forward to those? 
Absolutely. We look forward to every opportunity that we have, again, to talk to as many people as we can talk to. I'll reference again our 35,000 miles on the road, and we're just getting started. We're going to listen to as many West Virginians as we can, uh, as many parents, as many community leaders, church leaders, law enforcement. Uh, We want to hear what is going on in the ground. And I think what's particularly important and why I really stress how much we are getting out there is because this is about, you know, hard work. And I've always been a very gritty person. And uh, the, the, the best way to find the solutions to take West Virginia to the next level is to listen to the folks that are on the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to each and every community and spending time listening to the issues that matter the most. As expected uh, on Monday, um, Huntington Mayor Steve Williams jumped into the race uh, as of now being the only Democrat uh, that's uh, running for governor. That could change. Your thoughts on, on, uh, on Steve Williams? He's a nice guy. I think anytime you know you welcome people to the field, obviously I have uh, there's a, there's a stark contrast with the mayor uh, and I in our politics. Um, you know, and we'll, we're looking forward to uh, to getting to that in the general uh, when we win this primary. I was going to say, but you got to get through the primary first, and it's going to be a tough race. Uh, and it has been so far uh, pretty cordial, I think, between the between the candidates, because you guys all know each other and, and you're all friends, I guess, to a certain extent. Are you worried that it may not stay as cordial as we move through the campaign? <laughs> Every day we wake up, we're looking forward, uh, and I think that's uh, an important thing. And when we started this campaign. I said, we're going to go in every single day looking forward because that's what the people of West Virginia want. They want to look forward. They want to be excited about taking West Virginia to the next level. We're on the right track. We're moving in the right direction. We're excited again. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to tell our story. For too long in West Virginia, we've let others uh, dictate sort of what our narrative is, and I'm excited to be able to be uh, the face of that, a new generation of that, uh, and it's an exciting time in West Virginia. Delegate Moore Capito, I'll give you a, I'll give you the final thirty here, and I'll have you on plenty of times, as well as all the other candidates before uh, before we get to the primary next uh, May. But uh, why should people consider casting their vote for you as opposed to let's say the other Republicans in the race? Thank you again for having me on, Dave. You know, to take West Virginia to the next level, we have to make sure that we have safer communities. We have to have world class education. We have to continue our pro-growth economic policies, and we have to ensure that we unlock West Virginia's energy assets so that West Virginia can lead this country's return to energy independence. And as your governor, we will get that done together. And when we do, opportunity will follow. Our people will see bigger paychecks, and West Virginia will become a 21st century hub for opportunity. You can find more about me at morecapito.com. But to everybody out there, we look forward to seeing you because we will see you soon. Delegate uh, more Capita, it's always a pleasure. Best of luck in the campaign. We'll talk again soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dave. 25 minutes away from 10, 580 Live is presented in part by Meeks Realty Group. Our area's most beautiful properties deserve the finest realtors. Meeks Realty Group. Visit them online at meeks.us or call 304-440-1101. High school transfer rule. We're going to talk about that with uh, Delegate Dana Farrell coming up next from the Parmar Store Studio. 580 Live is brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group and the voice of Charleston, WCHS. Are you looking for a technical job in the medical field? Generations is growing and looking to add on job trained physical therapy techs to our rehab team. To apply, visit one of our seven convenient locations or simply click on us at generationspt.com. Toyota Celebration. Hey, it's Sydney inviting you to the Thornhill Motor Mile to take advantage of our red, white, and vroom savings. Upgrade your ride with unbeatable deals on our top models from the sleek Camry to the versatile RAV4 or the all-new Tacoma. We have the perfect car for your summer adventures. You can drive away with a smile on your face and money in your pocket. Click or come by ThornhillToyotaWV.com or US 119 in Chapmanville for the summer celebration. See Thornhill for full details. On the road of life, a truck is more than just a vehicle. It's a toolbox and an office. Linex of Nitro is trusted with their spray and bed liners, commercial van upfittings, and step bars so your truck is ready for anything. And with their undercoating rust protection, your ride stays fresh without the worry of rust or corrosion. Linex, sturdy, reliable, and they never quit, just like you. Call to schedule an appointment at 304-755-0036 or connect with them on Facebook. Facebook. We're live right now at the WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon, driven 
by Stike Wealth Enhancement. This is where our community comes together to make a lasting impact on the lives of our young champions. WVU Medicine Children's provides the greatest range of pediatric specialty and high-risk maternal care in the region, and this not-for-profit hospital never turns a child away. Thanks to the support of local sponsors like Kitaroos, Trojan Landing, and the Peyton Law Firm. When you text, remember, Polka Valley Bank sponsors our text line. Text YOUTH to 35651 to make a contribution. And when you call, remember Pew Furniture sponsors the Hope Room, where our dedicated team is ready to take your call at 877-719-5437. That's 877-719-KIDS. Join us in ensuring a brighter future for these young champions. Dial 877-719-5437 or text YOUTH to 35651. The WVU Medicine Children's Care for Kids Radiothon presented by Stike Wealth Enhancement. Together, let's change kids' health and change the future. Twenty-three minutes away from ten. Five eighty live brought to you part by your hometown baseball team, the Charleston Dirty Birds. Tonight, the final Thursday night game of the season at Gomar Ballpark, and it's the final one dollar beer night of the season. Plus, tonight there will be fireworks sponsored by Bridge Valley, and the birds will be playing with their Latin uniforms and their Latin identity tonight. Visit DirtyBirdsBaseball.com for details. Texas first Biden is the reason we are getting jobs here, and we have a huge surplus. Republicans like social issues, telling people how to live independence, and women don't like. I'm I'm sorry. Republicans like social issues. Tell Telling people how to live, independence, and women don't like that. Vote Steve Williams, says a text. Ryan Nicholson is our producer today. I mentioned earlier um, the mistakes that were made by the West Virginia poll. Rex Repass talked about it in detail on Hoppy yesterday. You can read the story, wvmetronews.com, or go back and listen to his explanation on yesterday's show. Uh, mistakes happen, and uh, it didn't, you know, in the poll, it, it had more capito in the lead. And Patrick Morrissey, and I think what was 23, and it turns out he was actually a little higher at 27. So uh, read the story. I want to have a little little comment on that myself coming up a little bit later on. Dana Farrell is with us right now, Delegate Dana Farrell. How are you, man? Uh, good morning, and uh, doing good. Thank you for being here. These high school football scores from this Friday night, Delegate. Right. I think Hurricane just scored another touchdown while we were sitting here. <laughs> and, I, and I say that jokingly, but... My gosh! I mean, I'm watching. I'm you know, watching the the scores on on the WVU uh, on on the um, on the Metro News ticker, and I'm like, how is this? How is this possible? These scores is the transfer rule that was passed by the legislature is is it responsible for what we the massacres we saw this Friday night? Well, it's not solely responsible, but it's compounding the issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we warned, we warned our fellow delegates uh, back in March when this bill came, uh, came across the uh, floor and we were ready to vote on it. We debated, remember this bill was debated on for over an hour on the house floor, a pretty vigorous debate. Uh, and a point we were making at, th- at that point though, it was all hypothetical. Now it's reality. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing it, you know, f- uh, show up with the, these lopsided scores and uh and even more so i mean we see the data you know this is not just about football remember this is going on in other sports and we're going to see this happening more and more as this moves forward especially as we get into winter sports and basketball what was the reason behind it i mean i know you weren't somebody that supported it but i mean obviously there were those that did and it and it passed without the governor's signature by the way he didn't sign it right um but what was the whole idea behind it as best you understand it dana Okay, uh, my understanding and what was told to me is that you know, there was a particular senator, and I'm not naming names right. here, but there was a particular senator, and this came out of the Senate. Um, it's, and it's actually came out the last two or three years, and it's been beat down in the House the last two or three years, and it was on its way to being uh, tabled and shelved again this year. On the last day of session, um, this senator shoehorned the – basically amended this bill into another popular Hope Scholarship Sports Eligibility Bill, which uh, he was pretty confident you know, that uh, – the uh, delegates would not uh, defeat the entire bill just to uh, defeat his amendment. And because it was in the waning hours of the last day, it was an either-or choice here for the House of Delegates when it came over. Mm-hmm. You either had to defeat the whole bill because there was no way we could strip it out because then it would have had to go back to the Senate, then the whole bill dies. Uh, and I think most delegates knew that. So that was the conundrum that most of my fellow delegates were in that day. And and so some of them went ahead and basically held their nose and, and hit the green button and 
and uh, put this through. And I don't think, and to their credit, I don't think anybody, like I said, at that point it was hypothetical. I'm not sure anybody realized just how bad this was going to be, but here we are. And you're somebody in your background. I mentioned that you're a delegate, but but you're also a longtime educator too, and, and so coach. And, and a coach. <laughs> yes. And so so you got a little bit more skin in the game, a little bit more experience than what maybe some of your fellow legislators have. Right, right. I've you know I've been at this for across three decades, and uh, probably longer than I'd like to admit that I am, <laughs> but, but I've been around it. And uh, you see, you know, this, and, and I've seen the best of things happen, and, and people bring out in sports, and and given the right environment and circumstance, you can see the worst brought out in people and and uh, that's what we're seeing right now i think you know we've set up an environment whereby we're bringing out the worst in people and in teams so explain exactly what the rule was before as far as because transfers have always gone on in west virginia and across the country i mean people and there's always been a certain amount of quote-unquote recruiting that's gone on i mean i'm not gonna i'm I'm from Logan County. <laughs> we kind of invented it, you know, down there. So, but this is a totally different animal, delegate. Explain what has happened. Uh, explain what the rule was before and what it is now. Well, it's a perfect storm, I think, situation we're in right now because before, you know, as you say, there was always people trying to manipulate the, uh, the rules and uh, eligibility and. Uh, you know, the territories and schools that they went in and they were moving around and changing addresses and whatever it be to try to, you know, uh, get where they think they could have an advantage or a team or school could have an advantage. But uh, it was hard to do even at that. So mm-hmm. what we've done now, though, is just said, hey, it's legal. Let's just open the floodgates and anybody can go where they want to go when they want to go. And um, and that has encouraged it. And then on top of that, you've got this pressure from, uh, on top from the college level with the NIL. Mm-hmm. Uh, you gotta, you gotta think that when a sophomore or junior in high school can look at and say, Hey, you know, if I can put up some gaudy numbers on Friday night and do it at a, at a, uh, school that's in a media market where it's going to get attention. Yeah. If I can, if I can put up six touchdowns, for example, you know, who, who knows if Ohio state is knocking on my door mm-hmm. next week saying, Hey, look, you know, if you go ahead and, and commit here and verbal here, you know, you're looking at a million dollar NIL deal coming out of high school. Um, that's hard to ignore. And, and you can't, I said last week to, uh, uh, on another interview, you can't blame the kids. You can't blame the parents in this case for doing what they think is in the best interest of their, you know, their child yeah. or their, uh, their family. So, well, you and I talked the last time you were on the show about that, about, you know, a kid maybe that doesn't have the best grades in the world. And this is the only chance that he or she's going to get to go to college is on an athletic scholarship. And, and, and so that's, they want to excel. Parents naturally want their pair their, their, their kids to do better than they did and to be able to, um, compete, uh, at the next level or to excel in whatever they did. And, and, and I look at a school and I'm not picking on St. Albans High School, but I have some experience with St. Albans High School because in another company I worked with, we carried their ball games. And, you know, St. Albans has not had a win. This is no disrespect toward the school at all or the coaches. They haven't had a winning culture in football in years at St. Albans High School. And I'm just using that as an example. If you've got a young man. Baseball. Uh, well, I was going to say, <laughs> I said football because, you know, they've yeah. had some success in some other sports, too. But I'm talking about just football. Right. They haven't had a whole lot. They haven't had a winning culture there. And so, I mean, if you're a kid and you've got any kind of ability, do you and – and you could fit – there's other schools across the state, you know, again, not picking on St. Albans. But if you're a kid and you've got some kind of ability, do you want to – I hate to use the term "waste your time," but uh, but language no. in a two and eight season, or do you want to go somewhere where you can be competitive and get eyes on you from a WVU, Marshall, whatever? And this is an argument that's made by a lot of people with some validity, uh, but I would counter with that. As I said, I've been around this business, and I've been coaching, I've been in sports media, so covering the ends of it, uh, working with colleges, universities as as well. And if you're good, if you've got the talent, and you're BFS, bigger, faster, stronger, mm-hmm. they're going to find you. Uh, I'll go back to Kurt Warner didn't even have the internet and he came out of the Southern coal fields yeah. at a single A school. And high school that doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> no. And it goes on to Penn State and on to the NFL. If you're good, they're going to find you. You do not need to be crossing multiple school districts to, to go somewhere to think that, you know, to me, it's, it's a fool's goal. I mean, you're after something and, uh, you know, it, but it's easy to understand how parents get caught up in it. Look at the travel sports, mm-hmm. uh, the club sports environment. It's, all about individuals yeah uh, it's not about schools it's not about team and us it's about me and myself uh, it seems if we've created an environment in the scholastic environment which was never that it was about the school it was about the community yeah and now we've entered in a thing where it's about you know how far can i go 
Well, and uh, again, this, I've always said, uh, Dana, that the the school is the centerpiece of a of a community, especially when you get into smaller areas. I mean, you know, it's uh, areas that only have one or two schools, you know, in the county, or maybe sometimes they just have a county high school. And and I always take it from this perspective, you know, you take a kid that has done all the right things in a buddy league system or little league baseball or whatever the case is, and they work their way up. And you know, if you you practice, like I remember as a kid going and watching high school sports and thinking, you know, and, and coaches saying, you know, if you work hard, you can put on that helmet or you can put on that basketball jersey. Some well, they didn't say that to me because I sucked as an athlete. But I mean, if if I were a good athlete, they would have. And then you work your way up. And okay, now it's my junior, my senior year at fill in blank high school, and I'm going to have the opportunity. But oh no, here comes a right. kid transferring in from you know two counties away. There is collateral damage when somebody makes a transfer. Absolutely, uh, both. That's why I say there's no winners here. Even the schools that appear to be winning. They're losing because you have these situations happening within the community, and uh, that creates division and uh, resentment. And, and and trust me, I've gotten calls. I've heard from parents from these schools where it said, hey, you know, my child is now having to platoon or share time and where they would have been their opportunity. And so, you know, we're creating a, an environment of division and resentment and animosity amongst communities, within communities. That's not who we are as West Virginia. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we pull together. We come together in crisis uh, this is not good. And when you go, as I did Saturday morning on on social media, because that's what that's where we live now. You know, you have to go on the X or on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you look at the comments. Uh, I mean, and people uh, a lot of times that don't have a, a kid at a school or or they don't do they weren't actually at the game themselves, and, and they just see a score. And then it becomes this big argument, which is what most of Saturday into the weekend, Sunday was, was people saying, well, how in the world it's bad sportsmanship for you to score 86 points in a high school football game. But then the, the other side, the other side comes up and says, well, we pulled our starters and we had ninth graders in, you know, playing right. against here. So you get a kid that maybe didn't get to play a lot and he's got the ball on the two yard line. Do you expect him to kneel and not try to score? Well, I mean, and I say, <laughs> we, there are no winners here because even the winners are put in a bad situation. Yes. Exactly. Coach. Exactly. And, and, and you know, and even more so. Don't get in. We're we're getting into the mental psyche. Those kids that got beat ninety five to six or whatever on Friday night have to get up and go to school on Monday morning and walk the hallways. Uh, I've even had reports of situations where those kids. Uh, there's been. I'm going to say this lightly, but mental distress <laughs> amongst those kids. Uh, that we've got some schools that may not finish the season. Uh, kids just say, hey, you know, at, at what point do you just give it up? And as we got that, and then on top of that, you talked about the rural schools. You got kids jumping in vehicles and and having to drive themselves across county lines to go to a school where they, uh, where yeah, they because you used to actually have to live there. You yeah. actually had to you had to move to a community. And at what point does that kid hit an icy road, or there's you know there's a head-on collision or something, and, we, and now we've got loss of life. Yeah. So how do we fix them? What do you plan to do? I mean, if this is on you, Delegate. No, it's not, it's not on you because you were one of the vocal <laughs> well, opponents to begin. I am part of the legislature, you know, and, and it was my job to try to convince, you know, my fellow delegates to right. uh, knock this down. I mean, I, to, to the credit, you know, from a political standpoint, uh, the Senate did what it did. And uh, uh, kudos to this particular Senate for making the maneuvers that he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't th- even think he realized the implications of what was you know going to come down to pike. So what are we going to see in the next session? Are we so, well, I th- yeah, absolutely. I-, I think the move is on. I've talked to the speaker last night. I've talked to the governor. Uh, I think there's broad sentiment. And, you know, we'll be talking to my fellow delegates. We're coming into interims this coming weekend. Uh, we can't do anything then. And uh, But my, my mission, my goal, was to try to get a bill together that we could talk to the governor to put on a call uh, during interims as a special session bill wouldn't cost taxpayers anything. Uh, we're already there and, and pipe this through real quick and get it on his desk and, and get it reversed sooner than later. Because if we wait and go through winter sports and, uh, and spring old scholastic uh, gear, it's going to be a lot of bloodletting. And uh, But now we've got a problem. The, the um, uh, House chamber is – torn up you know for renovations mm-hmm. yeah. we can't meet over there uh, for at least to talk to the speaker yesterday and it's going to be into um i, I know renovations at least till november mm-hmm. so i don't know it, we we may get into january before we can even deal with this okay so as you know because you are a delegate by the way are you running for re-election yes yes i will okay you okay so the house members are up next year uh, do you worry that many of them don't want to get involved 
in this because, you know, there's an unwritten rule, Dana, as you know, that you don't really tackle anything big in an election year. <laughs> and this does have controversy. I mean, well, there are people that 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 love this, uh, the, the, what, what has been passed. There, there are parents and there are others that, that love this transfer rule. Well, they, um, they're so, a very small minority. I'm going to yeah. tell you, it's about, at least on my timelines, it's about 95 to 5. That's because <laughs> you have better friends than I do. <laughs> and, and I'll say this, you know, as a as representatives, you know, we're we are uh, elected to lead, uh, represent our constituents. And mm-hmm. if you look at it, most every delegate in that House of Delegates or 100 of us represent a school like I represent Sissonville High School and part of South Charleston. Uh, I'm there, you know, to, to take care of those schools. And I, and as you said it earlier, those schools are the cornerstones, the centerpiece of that community. They're microcosms. They reflect who those communities are. Uh, and vice versa, and people take it serious, and that's why you know you wonder why are people uh, so up in arms about this situation more so than a DHHR or a, uh, a jobs bill or other, anything else out there because this hits home. This is about who we are as a people, and uh, we've got a problem. And I and I would you know warn my uh, caution my fellow uh, representatives that you know you get on board. Where it's going to be problems because this is a political albatross. Mm-hmm. It is indeed. Delegate Dana Farrell, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, man. We'll talk again soon. All right, thank Possibly you. Possibly the nicest guy in the legislature. You're, you're way too nice to be there. You know that, right? I don't know about that. But <laughs> maybe I get kicked around, but it's okay. Somebody has to kick the dog. That's right. Well, you have a wife for that, right? They can kick you around. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to go. Uh, we got to take a break. Uh, Delegate, I appreciate you being here. 580 Live is brought to you part by Hudson's Pizza. This month, get a large 18 inch pepperoni pizza and a stromboli for twenty two ninety nine. Visit Hudson'sPizza dot com for details. Back after this from the Parmar Store Studio, 580 Live is brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group on the Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses care for your family. Psych Wealth Enhancement proudly presents the WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon. Text YOUTH to 35651. Services provided by Polka Valley Bank. Sponsored in part by Chick-fil-A. Every text counts towards a brighter future. Some snacks provided by Pepperoni Grill. The Cares for Kids Steve Pugh Memorial Hope Room is sponsored by Pew Furniture Warehouse Showrooms. Proud to support the mission of WVU Medicine Children's. 1320 Smith Street in Charleston's Warehouse District. Open Monday through Saturday, home of the Almost Heaven Mattress. PewFurniture.net. Get ready for the ultimate summer savings at the new Thornhill Toyota Celebration. Hey, it's Sydney inviting you to the Thornhill Motor Mile to take advantage of our red, white, and vroom savings. Upgrade your ride with unbeatable deals on our top models from the sleek Camry to the versatile RAV4 or the all-new Tacoma. We have the perfect car for your summer adventures. You can drive away with a smile on your face and money in your pocket. Click or come by ThornhillToyotaWV.com or US 119 in Chapmanville for the summer celebration. See Thornhill for full details. Elevators. You take them for granted until they let you down. If you're working to maintain a stellar reputation, then let me introduce you to DC Elevator. We want to work with you to make sure your people get where they are going. What could be better than a new company coming to the area and already having 45 years of experience? DC Elevator is bringing a new culture of elevator maintenance, repairs, modernization, and installation to West Virginia. Don't leave your people hanging. For a free consultation, call DC Elevator at 304-345-7222. Thrive with five at the best community bank in the Canal Valley, Polka Valley Bank. Polka Valley Bank is now offering a certificate of deposit special, 10-month APY, annual percentage yield 5%. Take advantage of this great rate to grow your savings. For more information, stop by a Polka Valley Bank location today or call 844-782-2651. Polka Valley Bank, where relationships matter. Certain terms and conditions apply. Rates based on minimum annual percentage yield. Subject to change without notice. Minimum deposit required of $10,000 of new money not currently on deposit with Polka Valley Bank to receive APY. Member FDIC. 955 Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline 304 345 5858 Fruits Pharmacy Text 304 935 5008. As I mentioned earlier, there was a mistake in the West Virginia polling for the Republican nomination for governor. That poll released on Friday. Rex Repass did the poll for Research America. The original polling data had 23% of respondents saying that they were supporting Attorney General Patrick Morrissey for governor. In reality, that number was closer to 27% for Morrissey. The mistake doesn't change, though, who's in the lead. It's Delia Moore Capito, who you heard from earlier. He's at 32%. Chris Miller came in at 9%. And Secretary of State Mac Warner at 7%. But 26 are still undecided. Keep that in mind. Uh, so the rankings are now Capito, followed by Morrissey, then undecided, and then Miller and Warner in that order. Uh, to explain 
how the mistake happened, go back and listen to Hoppy yesterday. Uh, also, Brad has a story posted about it at WVMetroNews.com. Patrick Morrissey uh, took it as an opportunity for the second time in a week to slam Metro News. And again, as I said earlier in the show, for those who say, uh, I had text people saying, well, he wasn't really slamming. He was slamming the polling and not Metro News. Well, he explained that yesterday. And he's definitely now slamming the company. Uh, read his statements, part of Brad's story, WVMetroNews.com. I wonder if I wonder if Morrissey would have called it fake news had the polling showed he was out in front. Um, I think you know the answer to that. It's only fake news if you don't like what's being reported. Uh, and but you have to also remember, polling is just a moment in time. If you go back to around 2015, around this time. Polls for the 2016 presidential election showed uh, that uh, Hillary Clinton and Jeb Bush were in the lead. So things change over time. This is not the be-all, end-all. It's uh, just kind of where we are. I got a lot of text to get to. Text says, we need to shut down this open transfer rule in West Virginia, and then we need to follow up by creating a movement to start the ball on shutting down the college sports transfer portal. It is bad for everyone. Text says, uh, Dave, Senator Weld, uh, Senator Ryan Weld's transfer bill has harmed small-town schools that are hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging students every year. Uh, Text says, why continue to let Republicans, more capital included, lie about the West Virginia budget surplus? $1.25 billion came directly from the federal government. The rest came from increased coal and gas severances because of increased prices and record production levels under President Biden. These facts make you cry or deny MAGA, but they remain facts. Just ask West Virginia Revenue Secretary Dave Hardy. Uh, Text says, once the general public realizes Ryan Weld is responsible for the transfer rule, his chances are gone of obtaining a statewide office, says a texture. Uh, texture says, how come no one in the legislature is listening to the 7,000 children in foster care in this state? It's one thing to protect the unborn. It is another actually to care for children when they grow up. Walk the walk. Just talk the talk. Text says, imagine if we talked as much about educating our kids as we do football. Uh, Text says, uh, the high school transfer rule, no surprise there, the Republican supermajority messed up high school sports competition. Everything they touch turns to poop. Can you say poop on the air? I think I just did. Republican policy says the texture is one that chooses tens of millions of dollars of tax revenue from a pipeline and completely rejects the hundreds of millions of dollars tax revenue plus the downstream economic effects of legal cannabis. Add to that, Republican social policies will keep West Virginia in the early 20th century. Republicans like to swim upstream. Texture says Patrick isn't the only one attacking Metro News over the poll. Mac Warner sent out an email about it slamming the poll as well. I did not know that. I, I didn't get the email. <laughs> I did not get the email. All right, we got to go. Uh, remember, our WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids Radiothon continues. Uh, text, call in. You're going to be hearing a whole lot more about it throughout the day on this station and all of our stations, as well as we raise money for WVU Medicine Children's Cares for Kids, the Radiothon. That's what we're doing. All right, coming up on the show tomorrow, we got uh, Hannah Gardner from our uh, the Canal Charles Humane Association with our Dot Me Please Spread of the Week. Plus, our good friend Adam Harris from Mountain Stage is going to be stopping by as well. Hoppy Kirchival is back with Talk Line coming up at the top of the hour. My producer, Ryan Nicholson, thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. Till then, have fun and love somebody. WCHSAM 96.5 FM Charleston and 104.5 Cross Lanes on WVRC Media Station. We're proud to live here too.